Some of my students have been asking questions about the aggregate supply, aggregate demand model, which admittedly is one of the more complicated things that we do in a Principles of Economics course. It is slightly complicated, uh, but it certainly is something that just about any student can quickly master. So I'm putting together a series of short videos to walk through the basics of manipulating this model. And it all starts with understanding what sort of questions we're trying to answer. So I'm going to bring in our, our graph here. It's very important that we know what the axes are. So let me just grab the other axis here. All right, so in this model, we are studying price level, consumer price index. Uh, you can look that text up, or you can look that term up just about anywhere to get a feel for what that is. And on the horizontal axis, we are trying to find out what's going to happen with real gross domestic product or real GDP. So for uh, our relationships, we need two of the three relationships to determine what macroeconomic equilibrium is. Let's bring those in here. Start with short run aggregate supply. This represents the producer side of the market in the short run. We can also bring in aggregate demand. And this represents the consumption or net expenditure side of the market. More on that later. First, I want to direct your attention to our equilibrium. The equilibrium indicates two bits of information, one representing the level of the price level. Um, again, the CPI, which is an index uh, with a base year of 100. So if the CPI goes up, the equilibrium will move in an upward fashion. If it goes down from 100 to, say, 80 or 95, then the intersection, our equilibrium will move in a downward direction. The equilibrium also contains information related to the level of production or real GDP. Uh, forward movement is an improvement in production and backward movement is a reduction in production or real GDP. So let's go ahead and put in our equilibrium and we'll map it out to both of its bits of information. And here is our starting point related to price level and our starting point related to real GDP. For a principles of economics course, generally what we're interested in is direction and movement and not magnitude of the movement. So putting numbers to these locations is not that important. Now, the final relationship that you'll need to have an understanding of for this model to work is LAS. And LAS's position is of interest. If LAS is located directly on our macroeconomic equilibrium, that's called a full employment equilibrium. If LAS is somewhere to the left of macroeconomic equilibrium, that means that the equilibrium is out in front of LAS. In other words, the economy is really booming. And we call the difference between real GDP and LAS an, expansion, an inflationary gap. Now, if the opposite is true and real GDP is below potential GDP or LAS, that means there's a recession on. This is a bad time. Generally, when we manipulate this market model, we're going to be starting with a long-run equilibrium or a full employment equilibrium. 
So our starting point will generally be where LAS is the same as real GDP, in which case we can go ahead and we can go ahead and relabel this potential GDP. And that indicates that indicates that cyclical unemployment is zero. In other words, situation normal as it relates to the business cycle. So now we have the basic framework uh, for the model. What's left is for us to focus on each of these relationships in turn, LAS, SAS, and AD, in order to find out how to manipulate these relationships or when to manipulate the relationships, all in an effort to determine what happens to our outcome variables, price level, and real GDP.